Hi there, Top Tip Tuesday time, it's Bob here from Insidium and on today's video we're going to be taking some GPU particle simulations so we're going to be using Nexus and we're going to be using them in conjunction with mesh tools to create some really nice stylized mesh tools particle effects. So let's start the clock. In our scene we have got this little particle sim going on, uh, we have a scene sphere a primitive just got a display tag on lines isopoms just so we can see inside that sphere we'll be using that in a bit we have an xp emitter let's go to the object tab this is rectangle mode and we've just changed the height really small to one centimeter to make it long and thin then in the emission tab we've got it set to shot a thousand particles with zero speed so we're getting this movement because if we go to our nx turbulence we have this set to curl mode and if you want to have a look at my settings scale we've up to 170 frequency we've reduced to 10 and we've taken off the additive uh, velocity here and that's giving us this look so what we want to do is cast some lasers from our particles to collide with our sphere so let's go to insidium mesh tools and mesh tools ray line we want to change the shape from center we want to use the particles let's pick x particles and we can now drag in our emitter here let's drag it in so now look each uh, uh, particle has the ability to set out these lasers we've only got 10 and that's because our point count is set to custom and we've got it set at 10. we want every particle to shoot out a laser so let's change that from custom to all points now the reason they're all firing off in one direction is we've got no particle rotation so they're all just pointing in the plus z and that's why the lasers are going out this way so we want to change that so we need to add some rotation to the particles let's go to the emitter extended data tab we can use rotation and we want them to be pointing in their direction of travel so let's change that to tangential that's what that does now when we hit play yeah look our particles um, uh, lasers are all firing off like that and that's the look that we want now we want them to intersect with our sphere so let's go to ray line and we need to put the sphere in as a collider so let's drag in our sphere now when we hit play they're bouncing off the sphere and then jutting back in until they get to their ray length let's just put this ray length up to make sure that they'll always reach the sphere but we don't want them we want them just to kind of stop reflecting we want them to contact the sphere and that's it to do that we just select single shot and now it ends where they contact the sphere and we're getting this pretty cool look and this is the basis of the look the problem is that as the noise breaks our source particles apart we lose those nice defined strips of lasers so let's just switch off the ray line what we want to do is hold these particles together a bit in kind of tendrils rather than them being broken apart by the noise we'll do that with constraints let's go to insidium x particles nexus constraints we want to use some repulsion and attraction forces here well actually probably just attraction so to do that we need to pick the forces type and what we'll do is look let's just switch off repulsion There's, here are the repulsion settings so it's just going to attract now we want to say that each particle can attract up to say 30 others if they are within a radius of say 35 centimeters of each other and what this is saying is if they get within five centimeters of each other there will be no more attraction force actually we don't want that we want them always attracting so let's put that on zero and we don't want this to fall off over the radius so by default the attraction force is strongest when they're 35 centimeters and as they get closer that attraction um, falls off using this if we just put it on flat it's always the same strength and then let's just put the attraction force way up and now let's hit play and we should hopefully have these particles attracting each other which will maintain them in these tendrils yes yeah, so we've got that it's looking pretty good let's just increase that radius let's increase the attraction force to see if we can get them to just stay together a little bit more successfully yes yeah, so and now look we've got these really long tendrils which are breaking apart a bit but then they're rejoining and what that is going to give us when we reactivate our ray line we're going to maintain this really nice kind of striping of our lasers now they are moving and swirling around quite frenetically and we can fix that with 
a rotation setting. Let's go to our emitter, extended data. Now we have this set to tangential rotation, but if we reduce the rate of change down, they're not going to rotate as rapidly and it's going to have an effect of just slowing down the swirls of our particles. And we're still getting this nice frenetic effect, but it's just controlling it a little bit more. And we're getting this really cool kind of trippy laser effect. Now, the last thing we're able to do is these green contact points, we can birth more particles from it. So let's go to our ray line, points, and look, contact points, that's these green points. We can add a new emitter. And now if I make my ray line invisible, you can see, look, the new emitter is creating particles. So now we're going to create some more splines using a trail from these particles. Let's go to Insidium, X Particles, Generators, Trail Object. It says, which emitter do you want to make the trail from? So let's do our new contact point emitter. We don't want them to be full scene trails. We want them to be maybe 10 frames long with five variation. And now we're going to get some trails from these particles. So that's looking pretty cool. Let's reactivate our ray line. And we'll make our emitters invisible. And there we have got our cool laser effect with our born trails. And if we want to smoothen these trails out a little bit, we can go to our trail spline, set it to B spline with, say, natural intermediate points. And now we're going to have these really nice, cool, curved trails on the outside of our sphere and these intersecting lasers on the inside. And rendered with a nice additive material, the effect looks just brilliant.